Welcome back. I'm Mike with the Turntable Teachers, and class is officially back in session. Hope everyone's doing well today. We got another episode of the Right Mind series, the Right Mind initiative that we just launched with Jay Faith, partnership there with him, and among some other people as well, uh, Beliefs, Michael Settle, now Hex, who you guys can see right here. We got a brand new series right here with mixing tips with Hex, and I am so excited to do this. This is going to be really awesome. Uh, you know, teach you guys or anybody out there that wants to, you know, know how to, you know, engineer or is is or is maybe learning to engineer and needs some extra tips. My man Hex here really really knows his stuff, and I, I really can't thank you enough for doing this. And I'm I'm excited to have you you take me through some some mixing as well. I know nothing about it, so man, <laughs> how you doing, man? Welcome to the show officially. Good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank oh, you. no. Thank you for doing this. Seriously. Uh, you know, so you, how long have you been engineering exactly? Um, a little over a year. I'd say like a year and like two months, if I had to guess. I started, I started engineering for myself after my... Um, I used to go to a studio and then uh, that engineer ended up um, moving. I see. And so I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't have a studio to go to. I was like, I guess I have to kind of teach myself now. And I dove right into it, like YouTube tutorials till 2 a.m. every morning. <laughs> so, you know, this, this will be the new YouTube tutorial, right? Uh, <laughs> for, yeah. for anybody that wants any mixing tips and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm, again, I'm super excited to do this. And, uh, yeah, so we're, today we're going to work on uh, EQing a vocal is uh, going to be today's today's a little mini lesson and uh, hex is going to take us through that and uh yeah hex whenever you're whenever you're ready to go man we'll uh we'll take through eqing a vocal cool so all right so this song uh is one of my own songs which uh mike here is very very big fan of uh called oh, just, just so everybody knows it's yeah. this this song is my favorite of hexes to this point all right, fade away. It is incredible. <laughs> been on our. It's. it's I think it. Oh, is it still on our playlist? I don't know if it's still on the playlist. It was. It's, it's been on the playlist for quite a while though for the night school new new music. But yeah, but anyway. you know, you know how it is. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad okay. you took this I'll one to, little, uh, to be the yeah. one. I'll play a little. Uh, I'll play a little preview right now. So passionate, but is it worth it? All these thoughts in my mind and I don't think I'll see the 30. These visions blurry. It's 2020, but I can't see who hurts me. The mirror curtsies. Can't fade away. Wanna smile, but I can't feel my face. Every day that I wake, I'm okay. But in the end, I'll be lost in a daze. Mm. I can't breathe for a minute. I can't dream when I live it. I can't believe that I did it. I Enough, yeah, I know I'm different. Okay. No. So that was a little intro slash uh, hook section. Um, but yeah, so as far as EQing uh, a vocal, I might actually show you um, EQing the beat too, because I actually, if you can hear the, it's very telephony uh, mm -hmm. at the beginning, the beat and everything. So that that's from EQ too. Um, but to start, we'll start with the vocal. So if you could see my stuff over here on the left side of the screen, I have a lot going on. There's a lot of plugins on this side. Um, so all of these, um, assuming you know what a plugin is, but a, a, a little uh, brief definition would be like pretty much like a third party, a uh, little piece of software that it's like a tool that you can use to affect the audio. So um, here is an EQ that I have. Um, I'll solo the vocal, then we can start. I'll put a loop here. Can't fade away. Wanna smile, but I shut off the effects too. Can't fade away. Wanna smile, but I can't feel my. Cool. So this EQ, um, if I shut all of these other effects off that I have running. Can't fade away. Wanna smile, but I can't feel my face. 
that's with it. So it's very raw sounding, as you can probably tell. Um, and to start, uh, this was the first thing I added. And I started cutting out things that sounded, um, because I'm in my bedroom, as you can see behind me, um, there's a lot of room noise. Like, like when you're in a bathroom, you can hear the echo of the bathroom, things like that. So I try to use an EQ to cut those things out. So with an EQ, um, you can pick up a band and sweep it around and you'll hear um, the difference. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you right now. Can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't feel my face. Every day that I wake, I'm okay. But in the end, I'll be like, can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't feel my face. So right here was the area that I didn't like. Um, it was actually a little lower than that. So it sounds very hollow. Um, sounds like you can hear the room. Can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't. has a big ring to it so i actually took that and i cut it out so i did like a little bit of a cut so uh one and a half ish db and db is a measurement of um of gain or volume it would be decibel uh, right? is that what that's decibel yeah. yeah so everything's in db so um i i swept till i found that this sounded like garbo and then i <laughs> cut out like about a db and a half there um then same thing with these areas right here if i play can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel my face that has a ring uh, a bad ring that i didn't like starting out um that i wanted to clean up so um i scooped it out and as you can see there's a little extra um bump underneath here that's because this specific eq has like a cool feature to it where um as that part gets uh, louder than usual, like on its like loudest side, um, it will lower it even more automatically to kind of level it out automatically. It's called dynamic EQ. So it's like, instead of just pulling it down a certain amount that you want it to pull, it does that. And then it continues uh, to pull down when, it, when that area gets even louder. So that's what I did there. Um, and then same thing with these areas. Can't fade. Oh. So if you're listening on a phone, that might be hard to hear because it's lower frequencies. Um, but that was a little too boomy. This Can't fade. Oh, I wanna smile, but I also has a ring to it. So using those, it just cleans up the vocal a little bit and gives it, um, you know, a little bit of clarity is the best way to way to put it by cutting out the bad stuff first before you do all the other effects in the chain um so i'll do like an ab I'm, if you you they're very small moves you might not be able to hear but if you listen closely on like nice speakers or headphones you might be able to hear so i'll do without and then with can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel my face and then with can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel my face so very, very, very small difference, almost inaudible. But when you come down the line here after adding all effects, you want to make sure you start out with a clean bass because that stuff can really add up when you do effects and stuff like that. The, the frequency spectrum here can start to, start to flatten out and get, uh, you know, all the bad stuff will start to come up and you don't want that. So it's good to cut it out early before you start adding compression, saturation, all these other effects that we can talk about in the future. Um, and then another one, EQ, another one. I usually do subtractive where I usually pull down. You can also add, um, I've been doing that more recently, but for this one, I did a lot of subtractive moves. So again, that same area uh, that I first showed you. Very uh, hollow ringy this right here was like a super piercing sound uh that i heard it literally just sounds like nails on a chalkboard <laughs> and then uh that boomy area from before from the last eq so then i have those two eqs back to back because with after that eq i was like dang i want to make even more moves um instead of just stacking it all on one eq i just Threw another EQ in there because I know that my CPU can handle it. Um, 
And then this is called a rack. So basically every strip here that you see is its own mini plugin. So this is com uh, a compressor. So we'll, we'll turn that off and ignore that from now because that's a pretty um, complicated um, thing to add in with EQ. So we'll ignore that. But the uh, virtual channel right here, all it's doing is just pretending like it's going through cool analog gear from back in the day, but it's kind of emulating that. You won't really be able to hear it. So that won't really affect much. I'll leave that on. Um, so right here is the EQ. Now, before you saw an EQ like this, where you could actually see every point and drag it around and move it. Um, but here they're knobs. Like they were, they are on those big boards you see in movies and stuff like that. Um, those, those uh, consoles. So this is emulating a console called an SSL console. Um, and they are very, it's a very famous uh, type of uh, vintage console. Um, but I like this one because you can affect um, the actual width of the EQ. So for example, if I added a band here, you can affect the width with this knob and how many frequencies surrounding it you're actually affecting. So that's what, um, that's what it's doing right here. And then this is just the volume. As you can see, it says dB right there. And then right here is the actual frequency that you're choosing. So for this, I usually will, I'll do this so I can keep my original settings. Um, I will usually boost this super high and then sweep around for the frequency that I want to take out and then go from there. So I'll put these at their original volumes so that you're only hearing that. Oh, and then this down here is a filter. So I have it up to like 95. Um, yeah, 95. So pretty much see this right here. This is basically cutting out everything below that point. So that's doing the same thing. It's cutting out everything below 97 Hertz um, as far as frequency. So I'll play and then I'll do the sweeping that I did for this one. Can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't feel my face. Every day that I wake, I'm okay. But in the end, I'll be can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't feel my face. So I took out some of that ringing here um that frequency can't fade oh hey want to smile but i can't feel my face every day that i wake i'm okay but in the end you hear it kind of the hollowness comes out more um then this is a shelf so i'll pull it up on this eq a shelf is low shelf this right here so basically it affects everything below instead of a filter it's cutting automatically cutting everything below for a low filter or a high filter is cutting everything above um a, a low shelf pretty much just lowers everything below lowers or raises in gain so i'm doing that here with this knob um can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel as you can see, I boosted it so all the bass comes out, but then I ended up lowering it by 8 dB a lot because when you do a lot of, like I said, a lot of effects, the frequency spectrum ends up smoothing out more as you add more stuff. So I try to take a lot of the low end out at the beginning so that by the end, it starts to come back in a healthy way instead of completely overloading. Can't fade away, want to smile, but I can't feel my face. Every day that I wake, I'm okay, but in the end, I... So that's that. So then you hear... Can't fade away. It's kind of thin. It's not exactly as full as it sounded. And the end, and that's through... I'll turn on all the, com the compression here. There's a lot of compression here. Can't fade away, want to smile, but I can't feel my face. Guys, after all the compression. So uh, again, I'm not going over compression right now, but that just goes to show that it's okay to make your vocals thinner at the beginning because compression usually smooths things out as far as the frequency spectrum. Here, um, again, same thing, uh, subtractive. After the compression, sometimes, like I said, bad things will start to uh, come up in the vocal that you don't want. 
So I, I kind of pinpointed those here. Can't fade. Every day that I wake up, okay. But in the end, I love Oh, I wanna. So that is scooping out the ringy, hollow tones because I want maximum clarity and maximum fullness. And if if you take out um, things that are adding presence to the vocal, like um, usually around like the mid range here, like 1K adds presence. Sometimes it can be ringy depending on the recording quality. Um, but I like to boost that and stuff like that um, now because I said I do a lot more boosting. But if I was boosting, I would boost a lot of that. Some 100 to give it some low bass in the vocal to make it sound thick. But you can't, you can't boost stuff without making sure that the stuff surrounding it is clean and um, pristine. So that, that, uh, that is what I do there. Um, again, this is multiband compression. Um, it's basically just doing compression at certain points of the frequency spectrum instead of the whole vocal overall. Um, I won't go over that. I'll just turn that on. Another compressor. Let's see what this is here. So this is, um, this is a compressor here too, um, but ignoring that, just focusing on this, I, this is where I did additive EQ. So basically it's the same sort of thing. This is the frequency that you're choosing. And then this is the um, DB. This one doesn't have the, um, doesn't have the Q knob, which is the, the, the bandwidth. Um, so it has its own built in, which is what is kind of cool about the tools. It forces you to choose the right tools for the job instead of having one tool that solves all the problems. That's why I like these things. Um, they each have their own characteristics, but, um, here on this one, if I copy it over, I did this. So around 500 Hertz, which is usually like that hollow area, uh, 400, 500. Can't fade away. Want to smile, but I can't feel my face every day that I wake. So if I boost it super loud, clearly it sounds like ass, but the, the, uh, if you boost it like a little bit near the end, after doing a lot of your cutting and cleaning up, if it already sounds clean, but you want to add more body to it, that's a good way around 500, I'd say 300 to 500 at the end, um, near the end, if you're trying to add more body, 300 to 500 Hertz is a great place to boost like a, like a DB and a half, very small move. Same thing. Uh, I did two, a 220 and below 220 Hertz and below shelf. Um, and I boosted that by a half a DB. So like barely anything. And then I just did another filter to 70 just to make sure I'm cutting out all those super bassy frequencies. Um, kind of backtracking when you, when you use filters, um, usually you only filter like towards the beginning, but I'll filter throughout just to make sure those super low end isn't there. If you're bumping into your mic or, um, I don't know, your mic stand shakes or your desk shakes, if your mic's on your desk it causes a rumble and that um, you might not even notice if you're listening on something that doesn't have good bass response. Um, so you need like a sub ish type speaker that has like subwoofer and stuff in it to actually pick up that low end that exists. So some I've heard like horror stories of people like they'll, they'll make a song um, or engineers uh, they'll make a song and then they'll leave all the low end in it and then at the club because all the this huge subwoofers the rumble of the microphone and stuff like that you can hear it in the song and it comes out without referencing it and like clearly that's something they should have done so that's why you want to make sure that you're filtering out below like 80 ish um i filtered kind of high on this one but 80 is a good number um to stick to so back to this um so yeah this is this is with it with the body added back in um i'll ab this too can't fade oh without and then and then with can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel my face can't fade away want to smile but i can't feel my face so it adds a little bit of bassiness um and makes it sound more round and full and then um let's see saturn 
yes yeah that's pretty much it that is that's my philosophy for eqing a vocal and then of course like i showed there's a lot more tools in here that shape the sound clearly um and i have my uh reverb delay and i have doubler on here which like makes the vocal uh it like makes copies of the vocal and spreads it out so um that also makes a huge difference but yeah this is what it sounds like um without everything and then with everything can't fade away wanna smile but i can't feel my face every day that i wake i'm okay but in the end i be then here's with Can't fade away Wanna smile but I can't feel my face Every day that I wake I'm okay But in the end So yeah, EQ um, is EQ and compression are equal I was going to say EQ is more important But I don't know, compression is pretty important But still, EQ is pretty much what um, Is what shapes the actual tone of your vocal And if your tone isn't matching the tone of the beat It can sound really off really unprofessional um speaking of the beat i will show you what i did on this so this um this eq has a phone preset so um usually this filter is cut off about here but i just pushed it out so it got a little bit more high frequency in it um Clearly, it sounds much different um, when I turn it on. It's just filtering. And then I took those ringy frequencies. Uh, well, I didn't take it. The preset has the ringing frequencies like that. Um, those, these ringing frequencies. Telephones usually have really ringy um, sound sounds to them in the mid range here in the middle of the frequency spectrum. So this preset boosts those so, uh, a, a bunch so that it has that effect. So it's like low quality. So the, the point of me doing that was in a creative sense. So I wanted to have the quality even of my vocal too. I have a little vocal squeeze here. Um, if I can turn it on here. So passionate. But is it worth it? All these thoughts in my mind and I don't think I'll see the third. I have the same thing. Uh, I took those ringy frequencies though. I had them boosted, but then again, like the feature I told you before, the dynamic EQ feature, um, when they got a little bit too ringy, I had them lower and duck down. Um, but I filtered it out so it was like that telephone feel. If you filter out both sides and squeeze that. Um, so passionate, but is it This is without it. But is it worth it? All these thoughts in my mind and I don't think I'll see the 30. So the, the effect I was going for was I wanted to have it like kind of like suck into like a normal voice from there along with the normal beat. So I have the beat cut out right here. I did a little chop there and then I did a reverse reverb, which is like a cool like uh, effect technique um, that I again can talk about in another segment. Um, but yeah, let me... Uh, 30 these visions blurry it's 2020 but i can't see who hurts me. the mirror curtsies can't fade away want to smile but i can't so these these vocals right here this is the low vocal the devil ish vocal and then this is the regular one this one right here as you can see it doesn't have uh that effect on it so it's not telephony and it's just normal how it would normally go through the chain that i have set up so it's just going through uh, everything as it should. So Again, yeah, that, that's the like sound. You're 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 really you're pushing it then this way. Like you're making it thinner, essentially, right? Or yeah, it's basically, I'm purposefully making it sound bad. Like with by like taking those ringy frequencies that I normally like in the normal chain. So basically, how the routing works is these tracks are in are in a, a folder. Okay. So each one of these is in a folder and then they route to this 
this folder, which I can put effects on that affect all of these simultaneously. So it's taking all the audio from these four tracks and then putting, and then uh, it's running through these, all the, all the audio of these four tracks combined is running through these plugins. plugins. Yep. Yeah. So that, that way I don't have to call the reason why I do of doing this, like instead of, taking an EQ and copy the same exact EQ and then copying and pasting it on every vocal track. I can do things like this where I can like have my vocals chopped up and moved around and stuff like that, but still have it running through the same processing. Gotcha. So it, it kind of saves my CPU. Uh, so I'm not running a bunch of plugins at the same time, Con even though I, I am, <laughs> but you know, it's less than it would have been. Right. right. Um, but yeah, like you said, um, like you pointed out, I'm basically, taking all the shininess of the high end and the fullness of the low end and just leaving the mid range is a lot of presence. Like that's what we hear the most as the human ear. Um, but when you have it just soloed like that, it just sounds like a telephone and like ringy and like bad coupled with the high and low end though. Um, mid range can be good because um, it, it, it's what actually like makes the vocal cut through the song. But uh, yeah, I was filtering out the highs uh, to take away any sort of clarity that was there, uh, filtering out the lows, taking out all of the body and just leaving it with that ringy mid range. And then it sounds amazing. My vocals, even if I mix them mediocre ish, like as the main vocal, it would still sound sick compared to the crappy uh, EQ'd out telephone sound because, and that was the effect that like I wanted when my vocals came in. I wanted them to be like very clear compared to the intro. And um, that's how I achieved that by even filtering out the beat too, so that it had like a super filtered effect. And then it came in and just filled everything up as the uh, hook dropped in. So, yeah. That's basically it. Um, just subtractive stuff uh, additive towards the end after you do like the basic cleanup and compression and things like that. I usually add towards the end so that it's like I'm adding good stuff instead of adding like the bad source material that I haven't taken out yet. Focus on doing like uh, the cleanup first so that you're only working with like a clean signal. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much my philosophy on EQing vocals. And that was mixing tips with Hex, our very first episode on that. We did EQing vocals and beats today. And you even kind of gave me at least a visual of what that kind of looks like. I've always just being somebody that doesn't know how to do any of this at all. Uh, it, it is a little gibberish for me, but hopefully people that understand how to actually craft a song or at least have the wherewithal of, of engineering and producing that they'll be able to take what you, uh, what you envisioned today or what, what you gave us today and hopefully apply it. It's really the, the big goal here is, is, is with this, is, is hopefully you guys can get some of these application uh, tips and, and really use them to your own advantage. And, and so again, I want to thank Hex for being here and, and taking us through this. This is obviously not the only time he's going to come here. He's going to be doing a, a series with us through the right mind segments of our podcast. So basically take a, make sure you uh, look out for more mixing tips with Hex and you're going to definitely hear him uh, for fans of the show. You're going to definitely hear a guest speaker episode with Hex coming very, very soon. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. We also have a Making Beats with Bee Leafs mini series coming out as well. So anybody that wants to just get into production in general, you're going to learn how to make beats and mixing. I'm honestly going to like take what you guys are saying and maybe try to teach myself. So that'll be the, that'll be the, honestly the testament of how good this is if I can do it or at least know how to do it at some point. So. That'll be, that'll be the, I'll be the barometer since I'm not very musically inclined. So That's I got the, I got the ear, thing. but not the talent. If you can feel me, <laughs> hey, everybody starts somewhere. So <laughs> amen, to that, amen to that. So real quick, just cause I'm just curious what, what for you, what was like, been, what's been one of the most challenging things or like what most challenging uh, parts of engineering, like for you, like in terms of uh, your, um, you know, how, how you've learned over the um, I think it's coming to the realization that like you have to like do it in order to get good. Like you have to like, that's the thing. Like I'm lucky cause I'm an artist, but let's just say someone watching this 
at home is just just wants to be an engineer and is it doesn't actually uh, write or record music it's it's harder because you actually need some some source material to mix so um it's it's tougher because you don't have examples but i'm lucky so that's why i got so much experience very quickly because i was constantly making songs every time i made a song it was just another piece of practice for me uh the hardest thing was you know realizing that it takes time and getting impatient because no matter what people tell you on youtube and stuff like that like i'm i do youtube tutorials and i'm even saying this that like you should watch youtube tutorials but everything you watch you should also know that that is a suggestion and not a rule it's all just based off of your um mental reference of what sounds good and what you hear on the radio and things like that like always just try to climb closer and closer to these uh, a-list grammy winning engineers that you hear instead of just being a robot and thinking okay this person cut 1 db at this frequency i have to do the exact same move it's it's just not it's just not how it works it's just it's an artistic thing you can go any way with it and many different ways with it so yeah yeah, it seems it's not like there's like a perfect science to this. Like everybody no, I mean, just, do it their own way. Like these plugins on 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 this session, like if you if I pulled up the I just did a mix for someone today. If I pull up that session, not only is my chain shorter because I've started mixing like more minimally, but it just everything is different. Like literally from a couple months ago, even even day to day, right? It's a different song with a different sonic thumbprint on it so like you have to treat it differently every beat that you your voice might be the same but it might those eq moves you did in one song might not exactly be the right eq moves for uh this beat that you're using this time so you got to take it with a grain of salt and just be artistic with it and take these techniques that i for example showed you i showed you more of my philosophy instead of the exact trying to show hey you should do these moves I was just showing you more of a philosophy so that people can like. Yeah. So just so that way they can apply it themselves essentially. Right. You know that, yeah. The, yeah. If, if you try to copy someone else, you're not, people always ask me sometimes at the studio that I worked at, like, Oh, can you make me sound like this person or Travis Scott or juice world or all these people? And like, I'll say, I'll say to them, I can, I can try to have that effect, but I can't make you sound like them because you're not them. Right. Like even if you're better than them, you still won't sound like them. You know, <laughs> it's like, exactly. yeah. So it's like, you can't, you gotta, um, you gotta just go your own route and just use their, their tools, you know, just be artistic with it and use your tools. However you see fit, see how other people are using them and apply it. Yeah. It's almost like, in a sense, I don't know like make it like a, this type of metaphor, but it's almost like woodworking in a sense or anything like that. Like there's certain, yeah. like you're going to craft your own, piece and carpentry right but like there's still some elements or like at least philosophies on how to get there right but it, exactly. everybody what you're creating is going to be different than somebody else next you know some you know someone else that that does maybe a different type of of, of word working so it's, it's i think it's you said like you have to just be artistic with it i think that's great uh just advice in general you've given a lot of great tidbits today i think this was a great first episode i'm, I'm excited to continue and, and keep on moving with this a lot of Absolutely. fun uh, we're definitely going to link your uh, your mixing uh, page on Instagram. That's going to be linked into the description. But for people that are home and uh, just listening to this, uh, where should they find your mixing uh, uh, page? So my Instagram is at mixed by hex and hex is spelled H3X. So overall, it's mixed by H3X um, on Instagram. Um, I actually just made a Facebook page <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> kind of, kind of irresponsible of me waiting so long, but I got it done. I got it done. So that's, um, that's mixed by hex also. Um, and then as far as, oh, my website, um, if you want mixing from me, if you want me to mix uh, a song of yours, you can go to mixed by hex.com mixed by H three X. And, um, you can get a free sample to see like, uh, for first time people, you can get a sample of like how you might sound with me mixing your song. 
Um, and then if you want to buy it, the, the mix off of me, you can, uh, I can enable downloading capabilities and you can take it. We can do revisions, stuff like that. But, um, if you don't like it, no hard feelings, but yeah, that's my website where I do all my services and business through. So mixed by hex.com. Love it. So obviously hit him up if you guys need any mixing, but if you want more mixing tips, you want to learn it yourself. We got more coming for you guys. So definitely going to be something that we'll do in the, in the future for sure. This is going to be only, this is only the first one. And like I said, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in again. Thank you Hex for being here and doing this mini series with us. I'm, I'm really excited to just, like I said, continue this and, and really help anybody out there that, you know, is, is looking to become an engineer or wants to tighten up certain aspects of their engineering or, or just, you know, learn new philosophies and tips. So this is going to be really great. And I appreciate you being here. And definitely check out more of Hex in the future with us. And of course, like I said, everything that he mentioned is going to be linked in the description. All right, so make sure you guys go check out those links. Check out his music too. The music is damn good. I know you guys were hearing that same little fadeaway loop, right? That's probably stuck in your head now. So go check out the song in full. You'll definitely see uh, maybe see, see where he went with this. So I uh, appreciate your time. Hex. Thank you as always. And my name is Mike once again. This is Hex with the Turntable Teachers. And until next time, class is officially dismissed. Turn, 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 turn,